the average primary care clinician could read 7,000 articles a month to keep up with the changes in medicine. Realistically, nobody can keep up that way. There is actually no standard on how to evaluate drug interactions, and we're actually trying to come up with ways to do that. The way that we're different from other medical references in the space is that we bring our content down to the mobile level. It may seem like it's really easy because the information is so concisely presented, but actually that makes it all that much more difficult. I'm a drug information trained pharmacist and our team is responsible for all of the clinical content that appears in the Hippocrates service. I focus on patient safety. I'm a physician. I trained initially doing family practice. My team develops the clinical communications for our app. We condense down practice changing information for clinicians. Everything though that we build is really scale to be used by a clinician on a mobile device in the span of 30 seconds to two minutes. I'm on the drug interactions team. Right now, drug interactions that exist for the prescribers or in the pharmacy are, in theory, a list of every possible drug interaction. And what happens is it can create an alert fatigue versus herbs as well. What we do is provide point of care actionable recommendations to the prescriber. It's like a mystery to be solved, and I am gathering evidence, and there are clues about the drug, and I am now looking for evidence to support the story it's telling. We'll take the best of the best information from New England Journal, Journal Watch, British Medical Journal, CDC and Cochrane Reviews, and condense it down. We call it apocratizing. This is a summary of an article about blunt head trauma in pediatrics. A certain percentage of children when they fall and hit their head will have non-depressed linear skull fracture show up on a CT usually. And we used to admit all of those kids. It turns out that the kids that go home and the kids that get admitted do the same. If you don't keep up on the literature, you would admit all of those kids because when I was in training, that's how we were trained. I'm reviewing substrates or different drugs and I'm going through about 300 ingredients right now. and. As I unravel the story, I start to see new things that I didn't know before, and the picture can get more complex. One of the ingredients I just reviewed, it has an active metabolite that gets metabolized, and the active metabolite is done by a different enzyme system. A drug may cause that enzyme system to speed up. And so now I have this different picture going on. One of the teams that I work very closely with is the user experience team. And I like this also with the black box warning. They do field research, design, and interactions within our application. And then whenever a decision point is encountered, you have this ability to choose yes or no, or stage one versus stage two. When user experience wants to make it faster and easier for a clinician to get to the information that they want, I just come at it from a patient safety standpoint. I help them understand what are the decisions that need to be made in the patient encounter, and in what order do they need to be made, and how a clinician thinks about caring for a patient. If you don't trust the mobile software that you're using to care for your patients, then you have nothing. I still think about my friends who are working in the emergency department or working in clinics where I used to work before, who will see what I write, and that's really motivating. I always knew that I wanted to help other healthcare professionals to care for patients. We have over a million healthcare professionals that use our product. Doing it on a scale where what you put out there is read by clinicians all across the country is really inspiring and, and inspires me.